Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss some of the important rules for the design of beam. So, starting from the first rule, the first rule, general rule for the beam design is that the beam width to the depth ratio should always be greater than the point three. So, what does it mean? It means if I consider this is any beam and this is the length of the beam and this is the width of the beam B let's suppose width and this is the depth of the beam or thickness of the beam represented by H for example so the the width to the depth ratio this is the width of the beam W divided by sorry the width is B dividing by H to the depth ratio it should always be greater than the point 3. So let's suppose if my beam width is for example 400 millimeter and my height or the thickness of the beam is 800 millimeter. So our ratio width to the depth ratio the 400 is my width of the beam dividing by the 800 is the height or the depth of the beam. So this will be cancelled so we will get here 0.5. So our beam width to the depth ratio is 0.5 which is greater than the 0.3. So it means this is okay. So the first condition for the beam designing is that our beam width to the depth ratio should always be greater than the 0.3. This was the first rule. The second rule is the that the minimum width of the beam should be equal to the 200 millimeter. You should not keep the width of the beam less than the 200 millimeter. For example, again, if this is my width of the beam, B, this is the width of the beam represented by B. So B width of the beam should always be greater than the 200 millimeter or equal to 200, but should not be less than the 200 millimeter. This is the second point for the beam designing that our beam width should always be greater than the or equal to 200 millimeter. The third point is that the overlapping length should not be less than the 75 centimeter. So if I consider this is my beam and I provide the overlapping of the steel bars, overlapping means if this is one steel bar and I join this steel bar with another steel bar, so the length of the joint is known as the overlapping. We overlap this two bars. So this is known as overlapping length of the steel bar and our beam this overlapping of the steel bar should not be less than the 75 centimeter it means it should be always greater or equal to the 75 centimeter and this overlapping is used to transfer the load from one steel bar to another steel bar and our beam this should always be greater or equal to 75 centimeter or seven or we can say 750 millimeter so this was the third point. The fourth point states that the minimum diameter of the stirrups in case of the beam should be equal to the 8 millimeter. If this is the beam again and this is our compression reinforcement, we know, the, sorry, this is the tension reinforcement. This is the tension reinforcement provided to resist the tensile load of the beam. And these are the compression reinforcement used to take the uh, compression load or most of the time they are used to take uh, to assemble the stirrups in a beam and this is known as the stirrups are transverse reinforcement. These are the stirrups and in our beam these, these stirrups diameter should always be greater than or equal to the 8 millimeter. And this stirrups or transverse reinforcement are used to take the shear load or the lateral load on the that is coming on the beam. So this was the fourth point that the diameter of the stirrups should always be greater or equal to the eight millimeter, but it should not be less than the eight millimeter. The next point states that when depth of the whip exceeds seven fifty millimeter, then skin or side reinforcement should be provided. If I consider this is any beam. And this is the whip of my beam. This is the whip. So the depth of the whip, let's for example, is 900 millimeter. 
which is more than the 750 millimeter so when depth of the web exceeds in the 750 millimeter then we have to provide the skin or the side reinforcement it means that the reinforcement this should be provided along the whole depth of the beam this is known as the side or skin reinforcement and this reinforcement is used to resist the uh, things, the, the cracks that is occurring along the depth of the beam because of the high depth of the beam there is mostly chances of uh, the cracks along the depth of the beam so in order to resist these cracks what we do we provide the reinforcement along the depth of the beam which is known as the side or the skin reinforcement side or skin reinforcement so this is very important that of if our beam depth exceeds 750 millimeter, then we should provide such type of the reinforcement. The next point states that the beam depth should not be more than one or fourth of the clear span. So how to explain this thing? So if this is my clear span of the beam, for example, clear span of my beam is let's suppose eight meter. So the beam depth it should be not greater than the one fourth of the clear span. So this the clear span is eight meter. So my depth of the beam should not be greater than the one fourth of the clear span. So D is one or four into L. So one or four. The clear span is eight meter. So we got the depth of the beam is two meter. So it means our depth of the beam should not be greater than the 2 meter. It should always be less than the 2 meter. So this depth of the beam in our case should be less than the 2 meter if our clear span is 8 meter. So this was the last point where the beam depth should not be more than the 1 fourth of the clear span. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.